Hi, everyone. Uh, thank you for your interest in the physics program at UMW. Um, I'm just going to tell you a little bit about um, what options you have as a physics major, what kind of things you might study, uh, and also the options you might have with a physics degree after graduating. Um, there are two students, two physics majors in, in the meeting currently, Margaret and Drake, who will then talk to you a little bit about what it's like to be a student here. Um, and after we're done with that, which overall will probably take us, I don't know, 20, 25 minutes or so, maybe 30 minutes, uh, you're welcome to ask us any questions you like. Um, during the presentation itself, if you have any questions, you can feel free to use the chat. Uh, or if you prefer, it's totally fine if you want to unmute, uh, unmute yourself and just speak. Uh, none of us have any issues with that. Um, all right, so I'll get going. Um, the picture I have up here um, sort of seems like a random sort of collection of things. Um, I'll just say a little bit about what each one is. On the left panel here, these are both sort of giant astronomical objects that one might find somewhere in the far reaches of the universe. This thing here is something we call a black hole. It's a really powerful thing that sort of sucks up everything. Nothing can escape from it, including light. Light cannot escape from it. That's why it's a giant, hence the name black hole, right? Um, this thing down here is something called a nebula. It's essentially a collapsed star. So a star which has collapsed in on itself. You can kind of see all the, this, this flare here is the ejection of stuff um, while the star was collapsing in. And in the core here is actually something called a neutron star. Um, uh, and this is, so these kinds of things are within the bounds of the study of this thing we call physics. Uh, in fact, the two students sitting in, in the meeting right now for homework recently calculated how big the remnant of this collapsed star is, the thing that's sitting in the core there. Um, this right here, probably something you've seen a few times, I hope, it's called a rainbow. Uh, and that above the, above the clouds there is the sky. The question is why is the sky blue and how do rainbows form? Also part of you know, this thing we call physics. Uh, this here is a giant ocean wave. Uh, one of the students in the meeting is going on to do a degree in a graduate degree in something called physical oceanography, which is the physics of the ocean. Physics also explains how these waves form, ocean waves form. This thing here now is just a, a aircraft taking off. It's an Air Force aircraft, like an F-16 or something like that. Things that travel at a tremendous speed can do all sorts of fancy maneuvers in the air. Physics makes that work. This, something that we're all extremely familiar with, it's almost indispensable for our daily lives now. It's a smartphone. Specifically, I think this one is the iPhone 12. Uh, physics also makes that work. So I've said physics a lot so far, and it's somehow in all these things. So a reasonable question to ask is, what is this thing, this thing called physics, that somehow explains how stars collapse, how waves are formed, and how your phone works, right? Those are really disparate sounding things, but they're all somehow explained by this thing called physics. So what is physics? Um, maybe you're thinking you already have, and you definitely probably, or if you're in this meeting, probably have some notion of what physics is already. Um, but let's try and solidify that notion a little bit. The way I, so this is a really hard question to answer, by the way, but, but the way I like to think of it is you can think of it like a constitution for nature. So like the U.S. has its constitution, and all the laws of the land have to abide by that constitution. If a law is found to be unconstitutional, the highest court in the country basically makes it nullified. They don't, you know, that's not a law we follow anymore. We have to make a new law that instead abides by this small set of statements that is the Constitution of the United States. So physics is like that similar small set of statements for nature. Um, if you took a chemistry course in high school, you may have learned, you know, something called maybe the ideal gas law, Charles law, Boyle's law, all these different laws that you hear about in biology and chemistry. All of them have to somehow abide by this small set of statements 
that physicists try to come up with. That's our job. So here's the kind of things that are on that small set of statements. The set of statements exists. It's something called the standard model. Don't want to talk about the details. But essentially, physics asks, what is stuff made of? And when I say under the hood, I mean, what are the Lego bricks that nature uses? The very, very fundamental objects that nature uses to construct everything. Everything from um, you and I, chairs and tables, um, stars and galaxies. As far as we know, all of that stuff at the very fundamental level is just made up of four different kinds of Lego bricks. I could name them, but it's not that important. Um, additionally, how are those Lego bricks glued together? There are also four types of glue that glue those Lego bricks together. And that's all nature needs, apparently, as far as we know, to make everything happen. So the third question we deal with is how does everything follow from these two facts? What I do for my research is a little bit more on number three. And this is what helps us do stuff. I'll give you an example. One of the Lego bricks is called the electron. It is a fundamental particle. It's a fundamental thing that is used to make all other things. One of the fundamental things. And this is, this is the thing, the electron is the thing that is responsible for electricity. Electricity is nothing but electrons moving through wires and actually very slowly. So this is a side effect in a sense. Human beings are sort of geared to ask questions like this. What are we made of? Uh, you know, like what is, what is the fundamental nature of nature? It's, it's, a, it's a question we ask out of curiosity, but the side effect that happens is that we get lots of useful things like electricity, which you know, we need for modern civilization. Uh, so that's what physics is, as far as we know. So what do you study at UMW? There are two different kinds of majors you could think about. One is the physics major. The other one is the applied physics major. In the physics major, you will see all the pieces of this constitution in different kinds of detail. Um, and you will learn then how to apply these pieces to do stuff. Um, in the applied physics major, you will not see all the pieces of the constitution. You will only see pieces that you think, oh, I think this is really interesting. Let's say I think electromagnetism is really interesting. So I'll take the electromagnetism class. And then I want to learn how to do things with electromagnetism. So I'll take the electronics class. Uh, so the applied physics major doesn't have all the pieces of the constitution, just the ones that you might be interested in. In that sense, it's a little bit more flexible. The difference is if you want to go to graduate school, and continue studying physics, which one of our students, at least in this meeting, is doing. You can ask her about it if you'd like. Um, this is the major you want to take. If you if you are sure you want to go, let's say you want to go to graduate school to become an astrophysicist, then you want to take the physics major. If instead you are not interested in going to graduate school for physics, maybe you want to just immediately graduate and you know get a job working at the um, naval labs that are in the area, which I'll talk a little bit about, then the applied physics major would be the choice. Um, the applied physics major may also be the choice if you want to go to graduate school to do a, a degree in something other than physics. So for instance, um, electronics or computer engineering, then you would take the applied physics major. So those are your two options. The important thing is to, to understand is that they both, they both can get you a job or get you into graduate school. So let's talk a little bit about what you might do with your degree. Oh, well, before that, uh, one of the things that's special about UMW is the um, research that you can do in physics. Uh, so our faculty members, um, including me, I'm, I'm gonna talk more about my research than our other faculty members. Um, all, we all have to do some sort of research and research is literally doing more physics. So one of those three things that I spoke about earlier, either adding new statements to that short set of statements, that's the constitution. One of our faculty members does do that, uh, our new one, in fact. Uh, he basically, this is the last bullet point here, he adds more pieces to that constitution. He studies more fundamental physics. Um, I work more on Num point number three there, which is, okay, we have these fundamental pieces. Um, how do those fundamental pieces explain what we see happening in nature? 
uh, and my research is, is in, involves using lasers a lot. So this is my laser lab. This is a Christmas card we sent out uh, last, uh, last winter. This is Henry. He's one of my research students. He actually built this laser that I have. Uh, this, is, this is a very special kind of laser. It's called a femtosecond laser. Uh, what that means is the flashes of light that it produces last for a very, very, very short amount of time. That short amount of time is called a femtosecond. Uh, that is a millionth of a millionth of a hundredth of a second. It's a very, very short amount of time. Uh, it's a short enough amount of time that I can use it to take pictures of atoms and molecules moving around. You make movies of molecules moving around. Um, my research, we also collaborate with Stanford University. They have this giant underground X-ray laser that you see here. Uh, this produces even shorter flashes of light than the laser we have at UMW. Uh, so you can take pictures of things that move around, make movies of things that move around extremely fast, basically using, using that laser. Um, one of our visiting faculty, I think she may leave us next semester though. She does medical physics. So if you're interested in medical imaging, she currently has a research student who she's doing an honors project with in medical imaging. Um, though we will soon hopefully find another medical physicist to fill her position. Um, so those would be our options to do research. And UMW has something called the Summer Science Institute that provides housing and a summer salary to students who want to do research over the summer. So instead of getting a summer job, if you'd rather do some science, uh, then you could just stick around on campus. And, you know, uh, so Henry built, built this laser during the summer, for instance, um, actually during the COVID summer, you see he's masked up right there. Um, so that's, those are your options for research. And almost all our students do some kind of research. Um, it's again, become a requirement if you want to go to graduate school, but also employers really like to see that you have this experience of solving problems that you don't have to solve in class problems that nobody, including your professor, has the answer to. I don't have the answer to the problems we tackle while doing research. That's the point of doing research. Okay, so what would you do with your physics degree? Um, I'm just pointing to what some of our recent graduates do. Uh, this right here is AJ. Um, this is us looking at the sun together through a telescope. That's his daughter right there. Um, uh, Margaret and uh, Drake will tell you more about astronomy uh, related activities that, that we do. Um, AJ is currently working at the Naval Sea Lab, uh, it's Naval System Sea Command, which is in Virginia. A lot of our students, in fact, get jobs there. He's working on submarine, submarines and ballistics. Uh, we also have students who apply to med school. Uh, we have a student currently doing a PhD in mathematics. I think he's not at Lehigh University. I think he's actually at VCU. Uh, we have a master's student in medical physics. We have more than one student interested in medical physics, and we have quite a few students who end up going for medical physics. Another student doing a master's in electrical engineering. Um, the short answer to is what do I do with my physics degree is almost anything. Um, I also have colleagues who work at, um, um, on Wall Street do in, in financial firms. So it's a pretty large palette of things you can end up doing. Um, now let me talk about some of the students who are with us now who are graduating this year. So this has been a unusual year in many ways, um, but we have um, two graduating students this year. It's an unusually small class as well for us. Uh, one of them is Margaret, who's on this call. Uh, she wanted to go to graduate school and uh, she's been admitted into the following graduate programs, uh, some of the best in the country. Uh, she also cleared the first round for Fulbright scholarship, which even if she gets at this point, she is rejecting. She has decided to go to MIT to study physical oceanography. She can tell you a little bit more about that if you're interested. Um, I also show a picture of, he, of her here playing cricket, uh, which we did last, well, I think before, just before COVID was this meeting. I can't remember actually exactly when, maybe a year and a half ago, a little bit more. Um, I'm showing this picture just to emphasize that one of the things you have here at UMW, if you're in the physics department, is a very strong community. This is in my backyard. Uh, so if you come here, you will have the opportunity to spend a lot of time with the faculty. Uh, you'll get to know us pretty well. You'll get to know the people around us, our friends and family pretty well. Um, and you have a lot of support from us. Um, we want you to, you know, we want you to succeed. We want you to do what you want to do. If you want to go to the best schools for graduate school, we want you to get there. Um, 
Oh, something that I would like to add is um, if you are wondering about, well, why the heck would I want to go to school again? Uh, it costs a lot of money. Um, you actually don't have to pay a single cent to go to graduate school in physics. It's like, it's like getting a job. You, you essentially get a job to, uh, to go, you get paid to go to graduate school in physics. Um, another thing you might be able to do is uh, George Mason University has a joint pre-master's program with UMW, which allows you to take some master's courses in your senior year. Um, the masters are all engineering masters. So these are the different topics that you might be able to uh, get a master's degree in at, at GMU. Uh, but in your senior year at UMW, you will get some credits towards it. So it's an accelerated master's program essentially for UMW students. Um, and if you're interested in this, let us know. Uh, we can send you some pamphlets with a lot of information about exactly the courses you need to take, et cetera. Um, I think that's all I have. Other than this is the contact information for me. That's my email address right there. That's Margaret's email address. She's the senior student who is graduating this semester uh, with Drake, who is a sophomore soon to become a junior. Uh, you can contact him as well. They are both uh, officers of the Society of Physics Students. Margaret is the president and Drake is the treasurer. So I'm gonna turn it over to them to let them tell you a little bit about what it's like being a student at UMW um, and also a lot about this activities of the Society of Physics Students which is really one of the, it's, it's really the core of the physics community here. Uh, I'm, the, I'm the faculty advisor. I'm there for all the events essentially. So I'm gonna stop my screen share and turn it over to them. Again, if you have any questions as we're speaking, feel free to put them in the chat or just unmute and say, uh, ask a question. Margaret, great, go ahead. Okay. Uh, I think I'm going first. Um, yeah, as Dr. Brun said, I am Margaret and I'm a senior here and the current president of the Society of Physics Students. Um, and I guess I'm going to tell you a little bit about my experience as a student and then introduce you to SPS and then Drake's going to talk about our events and what we have planned for the future. Okay, so what is like being a physics major? Um, I think overall the work can be challenging, but I find it really rewarding. Um, we get like you get to work with your fellow students in a lot of the classes, which I enjoy. Um, you get to know each other, working on homeworks, and it's, I really have enjoyed it. Um, I'm also a math major, so there is a good bit of math, but not everyone is a math major. I just enjoy it, so I wanted to do more. Um, I think that is something to bring up. A lot of our students are double majors, or at least they major in physics and minor in something else. So if you have more than one interest, you're more than welcome to pursue everything you want to study. Uh, undergrad. Uh, I think Drake put on here, you don't have to do chemistry, um, which some people think you do. So if you don't like chemistry, don't let that fear you. But if you do like it, you can always study that as well. Um, <laughs> and then what else? Some of our courses, yeah, some of the courses you'll be taking are quantum mechanics, classical mechanics, electricity and magnetism. Uh, one of our electives that we had was astrophysics because all of the students really wanted to take it. And I think they're going to offer it again because people really, really enjoyed it and wanted to take it again, or, or the younger students wanted it as well. And then this semester, we're having statistical mechanics and then medical physics. And something that's really cool about our department is the students actually got to vote on those electives. So since we're so small, we had a say in what we would be taught as electives, which I really thought was nice. Um, what else? Yeah, there's, there's a lot of opportunities for research involvement and internships. Just because we all have smaller department, if you want to do research, there will be a spot for you. I've done research with Dr. Vroon for, I think, a year now, and I'm doing my honors thesis with him, and I've really, really enjoyed that experience. I've definitely learned a lot from that. And then, yeah, there's a wonderful student community. Um, most of our students are involved in Society of Physics students in one way or another. We have bi-weekly meetings. Um, and it's just a good way, once again, to get to know your fellow classmates. Um, and we don't do any physics during those meetings. Uh, we just hang out, we watch movies, and et cetera, which we will talk about later. So I just, it's a really nice way to get to know each other. Sorry. And then this slide, yeah, this is just an introduction to Society of Physics students. Um, we, 
yeah, I guess I can read this one. <laughs> and then, yeah, it, again, once again, um, it's just to cultivate another social act, um, activities in the department, um, which I think Drake will tell you all about what we do in SPS. There we go. Couldn't unmute myself. Hello, I'm Drake. I'm the current treasurer of the SPS chapter here, and I will be the president next semester. Um, so I will tell you a little bit about what we do in the Society of Physics students. Um, and the two pictures you can see here are some of our uh, most exciting events. We had a, a bake sale to raise funds for one of our club projects, which was a trebuchet, which is currently unassembled and maybe in the near future. but we assembled a committee and actually designed that ourselves and got to order parts through that. And we're expecting to do other projects that students can put input on and decide what we wanna do. Um, and to the right, we have our first astronomy night. And our department has a few really nice telescopes that you can use to basically see anything you want to. And there is a, Oh, actually, I, that picture is from my phone, but that is a full moon. Um, and here's a, a list of our other events. We, as Margaret said, we have semi-weekly club meetings. Uh, we do homework help during these meetings if anybody needs it. We exist here to support each other. Um, we do game nights and other social events. We've had a barbecue and a potluck previously. Um, one of our other upcoming projects will be something to do with rockets. It's classified though. Uh, and we have a virtual colloquium series that we started when we couldn't do in-person colloquium. Those may resume once we can get that set up, but we have a, a variety of speakers who come to tell us about all sorts of topics. And oh, I have a list of those in the next slide. I'll talk about that in a second. We made one field trip to see uh, Dr. Brian Green, who is a world famous physicist, you may have heard of him. And he gave a talk on his most recent book that he published and that was really nice. And uh, down here on the left, you can see our virtual club meeting. And we, we were online for, I think, well, all the time that we were online in classes, but we, are, we, we do in-person meetings and like a hybrid now if you don't want to come, but hopefully that won't be an issue next semester. Um, oh, and our other, I think, most notable field trip is that we took a, a tour of UVA's graduate level atomic physics labs. And that was really nice to, to get an idea of some things that you can do after UMW with your degree. Ah. Let's see here. Ah, so one of our more recent talks was, uh, I believe, from the math department, actually, but it was a... Uh, Dr. Ken Ono, who worked on the movie, The Man Who Knew Infinity, about a uh, mathematician and some, oh, can't move this, there we go. Some other topics we have were molecular laser physics given by Dr. Makija, uh, nuclear physics, medical physics given by our other faculty member, Dr. Makia, uh, quantum computing from somebody who works at Amazon and uh, responsibilities of a scientist as a citizen and x-ray lasers. And up here in this left corner, this UMW Cubic Earth Society is the design we have on our current club t-shirt, which is another thing that we got to put together this semester. And we're doing some more exciting things with things you can have. I have a sticker on my water bottle here. And yeah. You can see a variety of memes because we like to have fun. We, we don't just do physics. But yeah, in general, SPS exists to be an environment to get to know people who like the same things as you and collaborate on things you need help with and have a really nice time. I think that's all I have to say about that. All right, thanks Drake, thanks Margaret. Um, so if uh, our visitors, if you have any questions, feel free to ask. Uh, yeah, sure. Um, so the 
astrophysics class um, was the first class I taught. So I, I am, I'm a sophomore myself. This is my second year at UMW, I think, yeah. Uh, so yeah, astrophysics was the first class I taught at UMW. Um, and at the time it had, uh, I think all the seniors were in it, maybe a couple of the juniors. So it was a pretty, it was a relatively big class for a physics class um, and I love teaching it. Um, what we studied during it was the first half of the semester we spend um, studying the birth and evolution of the universe as a whole. This, this subject is really called cosmology. So it's really a cosmology and astrophysics class. Um, and then in the second half of the semester, um, we study the birth life cycle and death of a star. And it's, it's a challenging class, but it's thoroughly enjoyable. Um, it's a class that involves almost all of the physics, fundamental physics topics that you learn throughout your education. They're all sort of mixed together in this one class because it's such a huge topic, right? It's, it's the, the birth and evolution of the universe until today, there's a lot wrapped up in that statement. Uh, and you also, so that's one of the classes where you have to, um, you learn how to write computer code in Python. That's a general skill that we, at this point, basically require all our majors to learn. It's, it's how, to write a, how to write computer code, but it's specifically for the case of cosmology and astrophysics, um, the reality of the situation there is none of the mathematical equations that describe the evolution of the universe or the life cycle of a star can actually be solved with a pen and paper. They can only be solved with a computer. So for instance, one of the homework problems that I, I usually give during that class is to figure out the age of the universe. And you have to use a computer program to do that. Um, so yeah, that's, 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 that's the essential uh, uh, set of topics that are covered in the course. Um, that's, that, is the, that is definitely the course that if you are interested in astronomy and astrophysics that you would take as a physics major, we also have a non-majors astronomy course, which is um, intended for people who want to complete a, a general education requirement in science at UMW. Um, it's also a pretty exciting course. There you get a more broad overview without any detail about the same kinds of topics, basically the evolution of the universe and the life cycle of a star. In that class, there's a little bit more time spent on the solar system itself and stuff like that. Um, but yeah, th those are, those are the, the courses we have in astrophysics and astronomy. Um, and we also like to go out to the roof of one of the buildings with, with a telescope and stare at some of the objects we learn about through the telescope. Um, soon enough, I think probably in the next, I would say half a year or maybe a year, uh, we're going to have a dedicated astrophysics major, um, which will be, which will of course include the astrophysics class, but it will also require some classes that the physics major doesn't necessarily require, but has as, as an elective because they are uh, more geared towards uh, topics in astrophysics. I hope that answered the question. I don't know if that did. What's a typical night's homework? I will let the students take that. Yeah, we can answer that. Um, I think it depends on how many classes you're taking and what those classes are, which I know is not the best answer. But right now I'm only in one upper level physics class. So I have like one homework for physics a week. I do have homework for other classes. So it's pretty doable for me. Uh, Drake is in three physics classes. So he has a lot more homework. Uh, so you can talk about that. But I think the typical load would be two physics classes a, a semester. So that's like two homeworks a week. And again, you can work with your um, classmates on it. So I think it's pretty manageable as long as you start early. And I think, yeah. Yeah, it's something you have to not spend a massive amount of time on, but obviously you have to think about it a lot. And the nature of the questions are very involved. And I really enjoy it, but um, I have my homework right here. It's only four questions. It's almost done, thankfully. Um, but Never mind. There, there's some ratio about time you spend in class and out of class, but I don't remember. So I'm just not. 
Yeah, I think that's m most of it. Yeah, you're gonna turn in a lot of papers, I think. I also write big, but it, don't let that intimidate you. Like, it's definitely doable. Mm -hmm. I will say that um, I don't. I don't know how other schools do it, but um, and also the three physics classes that Drake is in, and the one physics class that Margaret is in. I am teaching all of those at this point, um, and the way I give homework is it is not intended for you to do alone under any circumstances. Um, most of the homework. Um, it, most of the time when I give homework, I encourage the, you to collaborate with your students. And I strongly encourage you to collaborate with me when you are stuck. Um, I, I, am, I, 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 help, I help as much as possible with the homework when students come up to me and ask about it. Uh, this is, I think, one of the primary differences between a place like UMW and a bigger school uh, in a bigger school, you will probably have a TA helping you with your homework. Uh, here, you will have me, the faculty member teaching the class, helping you with the homework um, when, when you need it. Um, and I think, I don't know if Drake and Margaret can talk a little bit about how accessible or not I am when they need homework help. Um, yeah, we can do that. Uh, very accessible is the answer to that question. Um, yeah, Dr. Rune is always here. Uh, and he has office hours. I think you have, I don't even know how many a week you have for all office hours. It's like an hour and a half each day, I think. Um, so yeah, you have plenty of time to go to his office and ask questions. Um, and yeah, he's very helpful. And then another thing the students do, especially now that it's COVID and we're like more remote, we have a Discord. Um, so the, every physics major is on this um, group chat. And you can like you can ask anyone you want a question, and they are very responsive. So that's one way we have adapted to a more virtual setting. But when we were all in person, you would just hang out in Jepson, and any student who was there would help you. Um, yeah, so I think it's pretty easy to get help, um, and everyone I think is pretty willing to help you as well. So. So we didn't really have any uh, anything else to talk to tell you, uh, any more information to give you. I will just put my email address and Drake's email address in the chat box so you can copy and paste it. Uh, since I don't know how much time we had to look in the slide. Uh, so if you have any questions that you think of after you leave here, you're welcome to shoot either of us an email. I won't put Margaret's because She's leaving us, unfortunately. <laughs> um, Drake, can you put yours? I know that it's not exactly your name, so I don't want to mess it up. All right, perfect. Yeah, so if you do have any questions about any of the stuff you heard um, or something pops up in your head that you want to ask, please feel free to shoot any of us an email. Um, and um, if you want to hang around, we'll, I suppose, I don't know, uh, maybe Adam can tell us if we will keep this room open. Yeah, it's, it's up to you guys. Feel free. We, we can stick around for a couple minutes. Uh, there is another session after this. But uh, yeah, uh, feel free to drop any questions. Uh, like uh, everyone said, I'll put my email from the admission side in here as well. So any questions? Uh, feel free to reach out, but yeah, we can we can hang out for a couple minutes. But uh, thanks all for joining us today. Appreciate it. Yeah, so I'll we'll, I guess we'll just leave the room open. Don't feel shy to ask a question, and if you would if you would like to leave, you're welcome to leave as well.
Looks like it's just the four of us. Thanks again, guys. I really appreciate you, you hopping on. I know it was not the biggest group, but uh, they got their questions answered, which is the most important thing. So, yeah, no, I mean, with, like, with, with physics, we're used to smaller groups. It's not a problem. <laughs> All right. Thanks a lot. All right. Have a great evening, everyone. See ya. Bye.